Hey guys, it's Stephanie and I'm going to be doing a book review over Nathan Ballingrew's North American Lake Monsters. This is a short story collection. There are nine short stories in here. This was published in 2013 from Small Beer Press. I have had this book for a while and I decided to finally pick it up because Hulu announced that they're going to be doing a mini series over some of the short stories included in this collection. And after reading it, I am very interested to see how that goes and how well it translates to the screen. I have seen a lot of people refer to this collection as horror and I think that might be setting up some false expectations. I read a lot of horror short story collections and with that there's a lot of tension in the stories. There's a lot of elements that are introduced early on that add to the tension as you keep reading the story and I will say there isn't a lot of tension in these stories. If there's an emotion that I could attribute to these stories I would say it's melancholy and these stories are beautiful and very thoughtful and very layered, but I would not say that they're scary or horrifying, so set your expectations where they need to be. One thing that I thought all of these stories had in common is that we are dealing with broken characters or characters that are in a very low place when we see them, whether they are struggling financially or struggling in their relationships, just struggling with where they are in life. And a lot of times we see these characters come into contact with something supernatural. What I thought was really interesting is that the supernatural aspect is never the main point of the story. It always lives on the periphery or the character is reacting to it and it's more about the character growth in reaction to this supernatural element. I really enjoyed this collection. I felt like it dealt with a lot of things. It dealt with identity and masculinity. Some of these stories had a strong sense of place and a few of them were set in New Orleans. The other ones I couldn't quite place, but I don't know that that's something that's very important. So like I mentioned, in these stories, the supernatural elements take a backseat to what is going on with the, you know, very real life non-supernatural character going through something rough. And I can see it being placed in horror because we do see a lot of familiar horror entities. For example, you know, there is a story with a vampire. There is a story that includes a werewolf and there is a story that includes kind of a zombie, but these are not the focus of the story. Like I would not say this is a vampire story or a a werewolf story or even a zombie story. These are stories very much about people. So I did have a few favorite stories in here. So I really loved the first story, You Go Where It Takes You. We follow a young waitress. She is a single mother, you know, working at a diner to make ends meet. Has recently had a run-in with her ex-boyfriend and tried to let him back in her life and it just did not work out. And while she's working at the diner one night, she meets this very interesting man and she invites him back to her place and he shows her that he has a trunk full of skin and faces. And what's interesting is that that is not <laughs> the main thing in this story. It's not like, wow, she met this guy who literally has a trunk of skin and faces. And he tells her that he can like put different skin on. So that's the type of supernatural stuff we are seeing. And in meeting this man and seeing what he has in his trunk, she has an epiphany that changes her life. And probably my favorite story in the collection was Wild Acre, which is the story that has the werewolf in it, but I would not call a werewolf story. This follows a contractor and he and his handful of employees spend the night at this job site because they been having a lot of trouble with graffiti and vandalism so they're thinking you know if they stay there they'll catch the people in the act. What ends up happening is he witnesses his employees being attacked and killed by a werewolf and he survives. He runs away. That is basically like where the werewolf is in the story and what I loved about it is then we go on and we see how he is dealing with this and just his whole feeling of, I felt like his feeling of powerlessness, like he was powerless to stop his friends from getting murdered. And we see him visiting his friend's widows and they are all having money problems, but he is also having money problems and he is unable to help them or give them any kind of compensation. So he has failed them as an employer. I see that he has some tension with his wife and he feels like he is failing as a husband, like the very old school traditional sense. And just how this event really seeps into every aspect of his life that he has experienced. There were so many great stories, but I'm saying like that is the kind of thing you are expecting. I'm not going to talk about all the stories because I definitely think you should pick it up and check it out on your own, especially before the adaptation comes out. Like I mentioned, all these stories I felt like were sad stories. Like the, the titular story in here, North American Lake Monsters, is about a convict who has been recently released and 
he is back with his family, his teenage daughter, who he doesn't even recognize. You know, she's grown so much since he's last seen her. He is back with his wife, who is an alcoholic and was seeing someone else while he was in prison. And just this reintroduction back into this life and how much time has passed by. But while he and his daughter are out on a walk, they see this glowing carcass of a monster and she goes back for supplies to draw this monster. These are almost slice of life stories injected with supernatural elements. So if that sounds like something you would like, I definitely suggest picking this up. It was beautifully written and like I said, I am very interested to see how this translates to the screen. I will say if there's anything bad I have to say about this is that when you read all of these stories back to back, you definitely see the kind of Nathan Ballingrud formula of how things are getting set up and all of these stories are very similar in tone so I can see why they were put together in a collection. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!